You see Mr. Moncrief uh, get into the rear passenger seat of the vehicle. So to be clear, this is behind the driver. And all of this almost happens simultaneously. He gets into the vehicle and the Montgomery Police Department then has a SUV that pulls up behind the vehicle. As they are beginning to get out of their vehicle, you uh, see in the video Mr. Moncrief slump over. You also see simultaneous to that glass flying out of the back of the vehicle directly behind Mr. Moncrief. Within seconds after that, the Montgomery Police Department, an officer points a rifle at the vehicle, and keep in mind, he is standing to the side of the vehicle, so he is on the passenger side of the vehicle, standing several yards away at the vehicle. Presumably, and this is presumably because this is, you know, this is just what you see from the video, but presumably, the officer fires his weapon after hearing the gunshot coming from inside of the car was performed by the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences medical examiner. Uh, the medical examiner has not completed his report, but I spoke with him this morning and verified information from his preliminary report, and this is exactly what he told me. He says that Moncrief had a gunshot wound that began on the inside of his mouth. It severed his tongue, traveling back to the back of his head, really towards his neck area, severing uh, half of his brain stem and exiting his head in the rear. Let me be clear. The medical examiner, who is a trained medical professional who is charged by the state of Alabama and is trained to do autopsies, says that the shot or the hole in the back of Mr. Moncrief's head area is an exit wound. I, I'm, I pray for the Moncrief family and all the victims that we've lost uh, in Montgomery. But when you have people who are willing to exploit that pain for profit, that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem and it takes the full um, clarity and, and intentionality of what an investigation should do off of it. And it doesn't help anybody to do that. Mr. Strickland cares so much uh, about the facts, he would have waited for the, investigator to be, the investigation to be concluded. He wouldn't have tried a cheap publicity stunt to get some viral videos on Instagram or Facebook to do it on George Floyd's anniversary. That's a cheap way of doing it, and that's a low-life way of being a lawyer. And I think this type of exploitation has to be called out for what it is. They're not the first who try to capitalize on the pain of black people in this country. They're not the first people to try to capitalize on black pain regarding um, incidents of tragedy and trauma. They're not the first to try to capitalize on pain as it relates to people even in Lowndes County, people in Montgomery. They're just the latest. They're the latest charlatans. They're the latest shysters. They're the latest hustlers that we have seen to try to maximize and be an opportunist on an anniversary of a day when cities and communities across this country are still trying to come to grips with challenges around race and reconciliation, with challenges around police reform in their communities. When my colleagues as mayors are working with community activists, are working with police departments to figure out better ways to reduce tragic outcomes, to try to figure out better ways of policing, but when you have people who are willing to discard the facts, when you have people who are willing to exploit the pain and the trauma of a community for their own benefit, when you have people who, instead of being social engineers, are more social pariahs, that creates an issue. Uh, and that creates an issue that must be responded to, and that's what I'm doing here today.